Doug Pexley here. Yes, the studio is a disaster right now. I'm doing a little remodeling in here, um, fixing, fixing all the popped nails and the cracks in the wall. And uh, well, eventually I'm going to do a full on built in desk, built in um, bookcases stuff like that. I've been doing some stuff in the closet or organizing all the art materials, but that's not what this video is about today. So, what is it about? It is morale mushroom paintings. Yes, I've done uh, several of these before um, and uh, bring you a new one. So without any further ado, let's just get in to the time-lapse mode. Uh, nobody told me that they really liked the full-length video or not from the last episode. So we'll do a time-lapse on this one. Um, and I will just kind of tell you what I was doing and some of the important things. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Welcome to the voiceover. Today, I am painting a morale mushroom. This painting started on a other series, How to Paint Morale Mushrooms Better. And this was kind of an example of how a lot of people will paint a morale mushroom very one layer, very basic, very nondescript uh, caricature of the morale mushroom. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out. Um, but, but here, I'm just getting uh, another base layer, correcting things I didn't like, uh, like the outline, it wasn't quite right. And then I threw just some uh, basic paints on the background there, uh, just to darken and, and enhance the negative space. Negative space is important, so never forget to do that. Work on it as you're working on your main subject too. Pro tip. Really, I wanted to start focusing on the structures of the concaveness of the mushroom. So I am using a combination of uh, alizarin crimson and sap green to get a nice dark, dark, almost black, but kind of warm. And I started doing that in multiple areas. And then I'm starting to go back over and just kind of hit those highlights of where those ridges are. Also using, for the mid-tones, you'll see there, burnt umber, raw umber, uh, and I'm also using, uh, of course, white and uh, cadmium yellow light. And I am now also, because of a new color, uh, that I use quite a bit is Indian yellow in there to really give it kind of that shine. This first section I was kind of fighting and it, it looks good, but I, I was getting really frustrated with some of the details. And you can see the photo reference in the background on the computer screen. The morale mushroom is definitely a tedious thing, starting with darks adding some highlights, and then working really with those mid-tones and really adding different levels of color in there, whether it's crimson, whether it's um, the raw umber or other browns, um, the Indian yellow too, and trying to get, there's some convex curves in there inside of the con uh, cave. Again, like I said, I was fighting with it, so this is the next day uh, working on this painting. I didn't like how the darks weren't quite dark enough for me. So again, the same kind of crimson-y, uh, sap green, black that I make. Uh, and sometimes I throw in a little um, ultramarine blue also, just to really deepen it up. I don't use a lot of black in my practice. Um, I make black by combining dark colors gives nice warm or cool versions of that black. Touching up some of the backgrounds too. And I really wanted to focus 
getting that the concaveness, the depth of the mushroom so it looks real in there. I'm still working from the reference. You just can't see it in this um, spot here. And we'll just keep adding detail. When you do one color one area, work it into other areas because that helps with color harmony. Uh, I might have to talk about color harmony and how it works within a painting at some point. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Again, so I'm working down. I'm trying to do a little less white and a little more that kind of raw umber that, um, what's that other color I use? I always forget its name. But I always forget to say, it's not always raw umber, but yellow ochre. They're very similar colors, uh, but the yellow ochre has a little more yellow in it, and um, it's an overall great color to use. all the time. Um, have this in your kit. Uh, you won't regret it. I like it actually better than raw umber because raw umber tends to be a little pale. Uh, the chroma, as it were, is a little less. But I keep going back and forth, darkening some areas, and you can see some of these areas are are a little more black black. Um, I think I did add some of that black black into uh, with in conjunction to I should say uh, some of the other colors just a tiny little bit just to to get that chroma down a little bit more. As you can see I've been working primarily on the mushroom head itself. Trying to get all those little intricacies because those ridges, sometimes they dive into the concaveness of the mushroom. Uh, make sure you look at a reference. Um, if you don't have your own reference, there's plenty online. There's a lot of mushroom hunting boards that you can find good pictures. Some of them are good pictures anyway. Oh, Morales. Uh, the Art of Mushroom is a good one. So with the base, the base is hollow. So it tends to, to be semi-transparent. And when you get light shining on it, the thin walls will almost glow, and that's what I'm trying to get at here. Work some of the dark in the, the stem, but now I'm kind of refining the edges. Uh, one area I use black a lot is with cadmium yellow light. It makes that beautiful green you're seeing that I'm brushing in here. Um, some of this I'm doing in a kind of dry brushed um, technique on top of the other stuff. Uh, scumbling is the term. The last uh, video, I couldn't remember the exact term, but scumbling, scumbling. Uh, we'll teach you how to do scumbling more uh, in the future. As I worked in the background, I kind of like the Kind of hazy, the kind of out of focusness that I'm getting here, but uh, the reference I had had a leaf up front and um, uh, some other things that I found kind of distracting to the composition. I wanted to put some other elements in, uh, in like sticks and some grass and just some movement in the background. The final background I wasn't super happy with but it's grown on me. Uh, I was threatening to uh, go back in and um, work on the background a little bit more, but 
I'm at this point where I think this painting is pretty done. I might fix that leaf a little bit yet, uh, but that's about it. I hope you like that. If you did, please check out the other ones. Um, one, how I painted this morale, and the other one was called uh, How to Paint Morales Better. And that's, like I said earlier, how I started this painting was from that episode. So see how I went from the basic morale painting to something a little more interesting. And by the way, this is a painting that is available at the moment so just DM me on any social medias if you're interested and I will be more than happy to uh, get that into your hands um, thanks for watching if you like this episode please give it a thumbs up you know subscribe all that crap if you feel like it it helps but not required I appreciate it though so until next time when I try to actually finish part two, part three of the virtues of being a better blah 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 artist, writer, musician, what have you. So, we'll see you then.